Hello, welcome to the morning news. President François Hollande arrived in Havana Sunday, becoming the first French head of state to visit the Caribbean island. Hollande is scheduled to meet Cuban President Raúl Castro today. His historic visit comes as Havana begins a new chapter in its relations with the United States. France and Cuba plan to increase trade, which for now stands at $400 million. Ladies and gentlemen, I arrived here in Cuba this evening with a lot of excitement as this is the first time the President of the Republic of France is visiting Cuba. It's also symbolic to be the first Western President to participate in the opening of Cuba to the world. Chilean President Michel Bachelet has announced a series of changes uh, for the executive cabinet. And what is the first change uh, to her cabinet since taking office in March? New ministers of the interior, justice and labor are being sworn in. Other cabinet changes include the Ministry of Development, Culture and Finance. And now to Uruguay, where millions of voters cast their vote for governors and the country's 19 departments. The Socialist Party Broad Front scored the mayor victory in Montevideo, where half of the country's population lives. Daniel Martinez was announced as the winner there. Election officials said that at least 85% of the registered voters cast ballot Sunday. The Broad Front was expected to win at least five of the 19 governorships. Most important of all is the commitment to improve and deepen the political project for development and justice in the sixth broad for government in Montevideo, which will be a government for the people, for all the people of Montevideo without distinctions. The Cuban Five ended their week-long tour to Venezuela on Sunday. They thanked the government of President Nicolas Maduro and the people of the South American country for the invitation. Before departing, the five anti-terrorist heroes asserted that, that the Bolivarian Revolution will continue in spite of all international attempts to quell it. And we go on. We want to thank our comrade President Maduro and the people of Venezuela for the invitation. We are proud of having been able to visit this land and get a feel of the ongoing revolution. These have been unforgettable days. The Mexican farm workers in San Quentin, in the northwestern state of Baja California, continue their fight for justice and fair salaries. They have expressed their frustration in face of the continuous abuses by employers, as well as the human rights violations that they have been victims of during their protests. On Sunday, they demanded medical attention for close to 70 of them that were injured by police during a violent wave of repression that also left three dead. They called for the release of 14 farm workers arbitrarily detained on Saturday. We definitely reject these types of actions carried out by the government to repress workers from organizing. They have implemented actions to inflict fear and intimidate us so we end our legitimate struggles. Environmental concerns loom large after oil leaked into New York's Hudson River Sunday from a nuclear transformer damaged in a fire at Indian Point nuclear plant north of New York City Saturday. NY Governor Andrew Cuomo, who was previously called up for the plant's shutdown, stated the spill covered a considerable area. The Federal Nuclear Regulatory Commission estimates the spill volume to be thousands of gallons of oil. No one was injured, and cleanup of the oil's lake is expected to last a couple of days. This is the second time the plant leaks oil to the Hudson River since it opened in 1962. Much of the central United States and the Carolina coast were hit by severe weather, including hail, snow, a tornado, and tropical storm. Rescue helicopters in Texan Denton County pulled six people out of homes after thunderstorms dumped heavy rain in the area. In Crum, north in Texas, a great flooded sweeping away cars. No injuries were reported. In Dumont, in South Dakota, nine people were injured after a tornado touched down, demolishing a church and damaging at least 20 other buildings. Other severe storms have hit parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin welcomed German Chancellor Angela Merkel in the Kremlin Sunday to analyze the Ukrainian crisis and bilateral ties. Merkel reaffirmed her support for the peace efforts and called on Putin to use his influence with Eastern Ukraine rebels to end the conflict in which more than 6,000 people have been killed since April 2014. Talking about Syria, she said that the two countries should act together. Russian president pointed out that schooling relations with the West affected business. It is not a secret that the relations between Russia and Germany today are going through a bad period because of the differences in the assessment of the events in Ukraine. Our bilateral trade in 2014 for the first time in five years fell by 6.5%. The Japanese ruling party officials signed off on bills uh, to implement a drastic change uh, in security policy. The new legislation uh, would expand the role of the nation's military in the U.S. and Japan alliance and allow it to fight abroad for the first time since World War II. Japanese government claims the changes are urgent to face new alleged threats such as Russia, China and North Korea. The proposed legislation has angered the opposition and divided the Japanese voters, but it will face no obstacles when handed over to Parliament, where the ruling party has the majority. The situation worsened in Yemen today, despite the truce offered by Saudi Arabia and accepted by the Houthis last week. The Houthis and Saudi-led coalition traded heavy artillery and rocket fire in border areas a day before five-day humanitarian truce was due to take effect. Saudi Arabia is sending a strike force to its border with Yemen, according to Saudi-owned media. The Saudi has alleged air strike on Yemen since March 26, killing over 1,200 people and injuring 3,000, according to the United Nations. And British Prime Minister David Cameron said that renegotiating the relationship with the European Union would be tough, but uh, this is this is of election uh, victory uh, had given him a mandate. Cameron uh, has commented or promised uh, to renegotiate Britain's EU ties before holding in out EU membership referendum by the end of 2017. His statements come a day after anti-Cameron protesters uh, threw bottles, cans, and smoke bombs at riot police in central London on Saturday. Police arrested four people and two officers suffered minor injuries. And we end our morning news cast with a note on sports. A British team are put in the finish and, and the touches to a land spin world record attempt on two wheels with uh, the jet reaction jet bike. They will attempt to reach speeds for up to 450 miles per hour. Richard Brown, an Affordshire engineer, attempted his team or same fit in 1999 but narrowly missed after when his tires burst. The current record stands at just under 379 miles per hour. More on these on our website, uh, tell us what you did at Thank you for watching and have a nice day.